You mentioned the PSA test, and we've talked to a lot of doctors, and, and, and hear kind of both sides, whether that's really effective and accurate, and, and if it's not, where, where do you sit in that? A wonderful question, and you're going to get a, an interesting answer uh, from my boots here. I'm from Arizona. We're always getting in trouble in that state, and um, I, would, I hang out with some physicians at a physician shooting club there in Arizona, and some urologists, and we'd go shooting. And then one of the urologists made an, an analogy that really sums this up, and that is that the the PSA, you know, first the, everyone threw all their eggs in one basket on a PSA mm -hmm. is what you're referring to. Now people take pot shots at the PSA. It's for sport as if now it's horrible. So it goes from one extreme to the other in typical American fashion, it seems. Um, but as my gun urologist friend mentioned, it's the PSA is really like a loaded firearm. If you saw a loaded gun on the, on the table and you've never touched one before, back off, don't touch it. You're going to hurt yourself or hurt others. Mm -hmm. A PSA by itself is a loaded number. And if you've never used it, if you don't understand how to use that number, then that PSA will trigger, pun intended here, an automatic biopsy. And that biopsy to the system will trigger usually an automatic surgery. And so therefore, this one number that people don't know how to read, it's one number all by itself without context will lead to damaging the patient and others, meaning probably their spouse. Mm. Right? Loss of erection, incontinence, this sort of thing. However, on the flip side, going back to the politically incorrect firearm analogy here, if someone winds up taking what we call a CCW, you know, they learn how to use the firearm, they, take, they learn the laws and how to clean it, this sort of thing, the ins and outs, technically your theories are safer to use it. And that's the same idea with the PSA, that if you know how to use this test, if you don't just take one PSA, but you take multiple, you track it over three or four years, you get to see, is it going up and down? What's the pattern? Is it slowly going up in a linear line like BPH? Is it taking two steps forward, one step back? That tends to be like cancer. Or is it a high and a low going up and down like the stock market? That tends to be prostatitis. Well, you can infer more info when you have PSAs over time. What is a normal PSA for them? Do they have symptoms or not? The more symptoms you have, typically that explains that the PSA is there for non-cancerous reasons. If you don't have symptoms and there's a PSA that's high, that's suggestive of cancer. So I can obviously add more to that, but you get the idea that a PSA by itself is damaging and is worthless, but the system puts so much weight on it because they don't want to pay for more tests, and we're still in the old days really of PSA. But if you have the ability to track it and get imaging and do an ultrasound or Doppler or an MRI or take a thorough history, find out if you own a motorcycle or not, find out if the patient engages in, in rectal intercourse or stimulation, any of these things can make that PSA go up. And then you get more factual information to make sense of it. So the bottom line is one PSA by itself, I agree, throw it under the bus, but multiple PSAs now you're talking a different story and you very well can help and save men's lives.